Hi, right, it's Charlie and Teresa. Saturday, May 6th. And Teresa's out here. Decided to plant some stuff. What you planting, honey? <laughs> well, these are the highly expensive English cucumbers. Why are they expensive? <laughs> a dollar a seed. A dollar a seed? Yeah, when I got the package, it was like five dollars for five seeds. So. It Did you came, get ripped off or what? No, no, it came from a re, uh, territorial seed company, but I guess they're special. Special. So I, I since they're supposed to be foot-long cucumbers, I wanted to build a trellis that overhangs so that as they grew, the cucumbers would be easier to pick. Ah, so you, you invented something. I invented something, some old umbrellas. Some metal from some old umbrellas. Yeah, and take a look. Oh, have water. so be beach umbrella. Yeah. I Man, I could use some shade today. It's been cold, windy, so, when wet. When it's cold tonight, I have some clear plastic tubs. I'm going to drop over them. This is very strange weather for May. May. But, oh well. So you already got them in the ground. I'm a little late out here with the video today. Did they um, need any special fertilizer or anything? No, they're just cucumbers. Just cucumbers? So, um... Well, I, I got a question for you. At a dollar a seed, will you be able to save these seeds for next year? Or are you going to have to buy them every year? Well, that's why I planted the cucumbers over here in the orchard beds, because uh, they're less likely to be cross-pollinated by my cucumbers over in the big vegetable garden. So you think you will be able to save them? Yeah, I'm, I'm hoping. I'm going to give it a shot. Yeah, I'm going to let one of the plants grow uh, at least one big one. And yeah, well, that dead one there on the end. Let that one... <laughs> <laughs> that dead one on the end. <laughs> so if you only got four plants out of five, so it's a dollar twenty-five a seed. <laughs> well, the one when I was taking it out of the pot, it, um, it left a lot of its roots behind it was the soil was very light and apparently it was too dry too dry for it yeah. and you said that these grew really fast inside didn't they yes they did and they they're just really freaky looking they look like animal ears yeah look take a look at those guys they're they just over overtook the whole sea tray <laughs> very quickly but we're kind of the stuff is ready to plant that we have inside that we started from seed but we're a little leery of the nighttime lows because it's still in the 40s at nighttime you planting anything else this weekend yeah i'm gonna drop a couple of tomato plants in the ground i also have hot caps for them hot so, caps hot caps until the nights are in the 50s is this what you're using here so what she's gonna what she's saying is she's gonna cover them tonight tonight yeah with the the little plastic right, domes. So. so we did a test on the soil temperature too, right? What was your soil temperature? Well, because I'd had these hot caps on it, the soil temperature, for only a day though, the soil temperature was 62. 62 in the ground? Yes. So the plants will enjoy that. So, first one, first transplant. Is this your first time planting these? Ever? Yes. Good luck. I, I, <laughs> I actually only tasted one last year for the first time. Yeah, that's when I accidentally bought it. <laughs> and I found that it was, well, it tasted pretty good. So, and I've had other people grow them in North Carolina and they said they were very bitter. So, I don't know. Well, you put some sugar in the dirt, right? <laughs> no. No, I put salt. Salt. Magnesium salt. Magnesium. Just a sprinkle. And why, why did you do that? I am not familiar with this soil here yet, and magnesium is a minor vitamin, so I thought I'd just put just a pinch. I, don't, I know most people spray it on, they make a liquid from magnesium sulfate, which is Epsom salt, but um, I'm not a, a big fan of spraying, unless I absolutely have to. I'd rather just throw a little out there. <laughs> Go ahead, honey. Whatever you've been doing and been doing good, so keep doing it. 
So over there, she's gonna grow the regular cucumbers, which I have to say, Teresa makes these homemade pickles and all the kids, everybody wants a, a big uh, gallon jug full of them. So she, she makes really good pickles. Anyhow, that's what she's planting today. We've got a couple tomatoes we're gonna put in the ground. Um, we're trying to wait till tomorrow. Just give it one more night, but she she may not wait. She may get it in the ground anyhow. But I'll let you take a look at those later if she decides to do those. All right, so this is Charlie and Teresa Garden for Two. Thanks for watching. All right, this is Charlie and Teresa. She's back. She decided to plant her tomatoes. Let me look at, let me get a good zoom in on what you got in the box. She's going for it. Those are her little tomatoes. She started from seed. Yay! And those. Those are Romas. Those are Romas, and those are my big tomatoes. I started from seed. <laughs> Not necessarily better just because they're bigger. These guys will catch up fast. Obviously, this uh, tomato is quite tall, and the pot is quite small. Yeah, it's time to get that out of that pot. So, I'm going to amend the soil when I dig the hole. Um, I could plant the tomato plant. like a foot and a half deep or I could dig down and then bend it so it goes sideways. I might do one of each. So she's lamenting that because she knows if she goes down deeper the soil is not as good. And what you saw her do, there's the root ball. That's a root bound tomato plant. Yeah you can see the roots are just going around in circles. Yep. But we expected that. The so you saw her snap the bottom leaves off. Up that stem of the tomato, got all those little hairs coming out of this, the main trunk. And it'll grow roots out of there and that'll help steady it in the wind and give it more nutrition. And hopefully we'll get more tomatoes that way. This guy's got a couple flowers on it. Not many, but he's got a couple. So. So we'll see what happens. Yeah, we'll see. When it's got to withstand 45 degree temperatures tonight and yeah. then tomorrow is going to be even warmer than today. Yeah. What do you think? Take one more leaf off? Yeah, you can. It's not that much difference. And don't fall in. <laughs> so what Teresa did here, she took some of the posts we had, whatever metal, and she jammed them in the ground. She's got a little auger bit that goes on her little battery power drill. Drills a little hole down there for her and then she puts those posts in and tamps them down. And then she wires up all that metal. And we'll use that as a trellis to tie up the tomatoes. And there she goes. Yeah, the soil is very clay here. Our soil in different beds is different. Some of them are sandy, some of them are clay. Yeah, it's a, this area is a real challenge. And some of it we only tilled like as far as we could, you know, do. <laughs> it's because we're old. We do the best we can. Not sure. Sorry, the sun is really bright. I have a short sleeve shirt on. She's bundled up from the like that because she wants to keep the sun off her skin. So, you know, no skin cancer things. But she's not cold. She's hot. Yeah, I'm warm. And you can see the shadows on the video. Oh my gosh. So. Man. She's having trouble. I might have to get in there and help. <laughs> it's you a... can do it. You can do it. <laughs> Look at that junk All dirt. Right. Let, me, let me try it on for size. She's not deep enough. Well, maybe. 
Yeah. That's about as far as it's going to go. That's about it. Yeah. But. Now okay. she's putting a little bit of. Uh, well, this is organic. This is Espoma. Espoma. And uh, put some in the hole and some on the dirt. Bone meal. Da -da -da -da. <laughs> well, I have put gypsum in the soil. Um, because it's clay and gypsum is supposed to keep the particles from sticking together as much. And another thing about gypsum is it's calcium sulfate. So it will keep your tomatoes from getting blossom and rot. Mm -hmm. But there's still so much clay in here that I'm going to have to put some more, you know, just working around the tomato plants. Well, it's our first year. The dirt actually looks pretty good from where we started. <laughs> a little pinch of bone meal. This bed did have a winter cover on it, and then we turned that under. Okay. Water, not that it needs it. Oops. Yeah, we had like 10 inches of rain in the last three days. Um, if you, if you wanted to, you could just sort of, you know, loosen the roots a little bit. But with tomatoes, there's not really much of a problem with them finding their way. They're they're pretty smart. <laughs> so yeah. you go in there and put some of this. I'm gonna throw in some of the um, pro mix because I I'm aware that this soil was kind of nothing for many years all it grew was grass and i don't know how much in the way of um organisms of the mycorrhiza and all that jazz that was in here well i'd say compost it more but we're out of compost she used every bit of compost so now we're in small pile mode we're making small piles like every two to three weeks instead of a huge pile because the used pile just takes us longer. That looks pretty good. It's crooked, but it's pretty good. <laughs> How are you going to tie it to that fence because it's so far away? I will. I will use... I am... I always have plenty of bed sheets. And uh, I use old socks. I don't buy any fancy tomato ties or anything because I just throw them away. They kind of rot away at the end of the year. So this, I'm going to tie it in a couple places so when the wind blows, it just sort of hangs in there. I wrap it around just a little bit. Do you know the good Boy Scout knots? <laughs> yeah, I swear not. But that was left over right and under, right over left and under. On this. Two ties. On the yeah. Okay. Now I'm not sure whether my husband wants um, long and skinny. We're already having suckers on these plants. The problem is they could be beefsteak or they could be celebrity. And one I think is um, the kind that can go determinate and indeterminate. Yeah. <laughs> I gotta help Trace every now and then. Yes. See, that's like that's it. I don't do any of the heavy digging or anything. I let her do all that work, but I'll help her with a couple words. Oh, you are a funny man. Okay. I can't get honestly. I can't get her to stop. I was like, "Why are you doing that? Let me do it." She's like, "Nope." She just keeps going. I've been doing this for about forty years. Forty years. You know, you're going to have to start watching that roost out method and so you don't have any work. <laughs> Do it the easy way. Okay, so that's a big one. That's a big one. All right. So we're not going to show you the other one because it's the same thing. No, it's not. Oh, oh no, it's the not. The other big one. Yeah, yeah, the other big one. Then we'll, we, she's got the little ones. So I'll, I'll come back on with the little ones. All right, so we're back now and now we had the little guys that Teresa started from seed which are not so little. 
What kind are these, hon? Do you these remember? These are Romas. All right, these are Romas. And they're not very tall. They're, you know, they, uh, these are determinate. So they won't get, they probably won't even get as tall as the tomato fence. But they get their crop all at once instead of growing tomatoes through the summer. Um, and I want them all at once because these are the ones you use for drying and um, freezing and canning. So, so this is the first year, like, we've grown tomatoes plenty of times in the past. And it was just, you know, so we had some fresh tomatoes to eat through the summer. This well, year... I, I'm sorry to interrupt you, but I did grow romas before to, to freeze. To freeze. Okay. But, yeah, this is the first time we're, we're trying to grow a little bit bigger. And we're not there yet, but we're going we're gonna to try and say, can we grow enough tomatoes you know, to last us two for the whole year. And that's the whole idea, garden for two. How many do we need? We don't know exactly. So we, we're we just guessing. So with these, um, I haven't had a large problem with cutworms yet, but I imagine a fresh tomato plant is going to be mighty tasty for them. So what are you doing there? This is a cutworm collar. Um, I can kind of wiggle it in and around a little bit deeper than the root ball. Um, it's not root bound or anything because it's so small. And I did pick off the, the very bottom most leaves. You say so, cutworm collar. It looks like a soup can to me. Yeah, it's a soup can. No, it's a uh, mushroom can. Mushroom can. Yeah. So. Now we're not going to grow our own mushrooms. I'd love to have some fresh mushrooms, but that's not in the cards for us yet. So, first of all, I put fertilizer in the hole. And there was fertilizer in the dirt that I'm using the backfill. Um, you see, oh, there, okay. Um, tamping down the soil in the can just a tad. And now it's all set. I might come later and um, put some mulch down. Hay uh, straw is what we have. But um, I have some old pretzel cans. We've had them for a long time back when we used to eat carbs. And this is going to go on tonight. That makes the tomatoes taste better, right? <laughs> yeah. <right. laughs> so that's a hot cap. Uh, you could use any kind of clear plastic or glass containers. Yeah, but don't leave that on during the day. You'll cook your tomatoes. Right. You don't do that. That's just, she's just showing you guys. Yeah. Anyhow, why did you space it so far apart, huh? From uh, there? Basement, at least 12 inches apart. Another one's going to be. Oh, okay. Here. All right. Yeah. I think our neighbor's cutting the grass. I have more, but I I only have five hot caps, and the other ones are smaller. Okay, so you're only doing five today. Yes. Cool. When do you think you'll get tomatoes from that? How long? I forgot to look. All right, guys. The lawnmower's coming, so I'm going to say goodbye for now.